Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my plans for a CNC plasma and what has happened with Wright CNC since the last video. Alright, since the last video a lot of things have happened with Wright CNC. Uh, they did not respond to my letter at all. As a matter of fact, I've had no communication with them. And uh, it appears that they are restructuring or going out of business, I'm not sure. Their websites are down. Uh, there is no contact at all. Even Chris has gone quiet with his uh, Facebook antics. So I'm not sure what's going on with them at all. Uh, they had posted some CNC machines for sale uh, locally in Las Vegas on Facebook Marketplace, uh, cash only. And that kind of pissed me off a bit. I, if, I mean, if they had those tables available, why weren't they giving them to the people that they owed tables to? I would have accepted one of those without an issue, just so this whole thing could be over. But instead, I had to start a fraud dispute with Wells Fargo, um, which still has two months or so uh, to go. Now, when you do a, uh, a fraud uh, claim with Wells Fargo, um, they get in contact with Visa, and Visa says, uh, you have 45 days to respond to us to whoever uh, you know, took the money, which in this case is right CNC. And then uh, if they don't get a response in 45 days, I think they automatically default to me. Um, but they, they have another 45 days after that response uh, to figure out what they want to do. And they, they purposely slow this down because it stops people from, from uh, fraud, fraudulently using the fraud system, I should say. Um, so anyways, I have two months left before I get my money, which is miserable because I would really like to have a CNC machine to use. I need it to finish a bunch of projects I have or even start projects I have. And then I also need it to build other tools I plan on building. Um, I need the table so I can do a bunch of modifications to a cheap bead roller that I picked up, you know, putting a motor on it, 5K foot pedal, making it a whole lot stiffer, building a stand and, and whatnot. And uh, it, it's, it's killing me too, because I can't make any money with a machine I don't have. If I had the machine, I could be making a few bucks here and there to pay my bills instead of living off of savings. So I've looked into a few other CNC companies. Um, I haven't called them yet. Uh, Spark Robotic. Uh, there's also STV CNC, which is right by uh, where Wright was in the Las Vegas Motor Speedway complex. And uh, I'm still going to do that, but I'm really leaning towards building my own table. I'd really like to weld up my own uh, the table itself, like not the not the gantry and everything, but the the actual table needs to be very stiff um, and also somewhat heavy, uh, just because it, it it can't move around from the gantry, you know, changing directions and whatnot. The idea is to use a 55 gallon drum underneath it uh, with a little bit of air pressure to be able to empty and fill the water table. And then it's also going to have an overflow on one edge. So if I ever turn the table into a, well, if I, I make it so I can use the table also as a, uh, a abrasive water jet, um, there is somewhere for that extra water to go. And uh, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do all that yet, but it really requires me to build my own. Um, plans at this point are for a MyPlasm controller from Proma and uh, 600 ounce or so NEMA 23 motors and uh, a gear, actually it's not a gear reduction, a belt reduction uh, gantry. The one that I really like so far, or the one I like out of everything I've seen available, is the Precision Plasma Gantry, which is really similar or almost the same as a cutting edge plasma. Supposedly those two guys are family somehow, or I'm not entirely sure, but they both make uh, the same gantry or what. Or maybe, I don't know, one of them relabels the others, I'm, I'm not sure. But that gantry looks like it will work pretty well, other than it's really heavy. Um, 
but I, I think I can make that work. My, my, I don't do, I don't plan on doing a lot of very thin material, which would require a, a high in, inches per minute speed. So I don't think it'll affect me too bad. My, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm going to do much lighter than uh, eighth inch <clears throat> for the, the kind of stuff I want to cut out. Now that may change in the future. Who knows? So uh, I think I'm going to try and build a five by ten table just so if I ever need to make large things, um, I'll have that extra, that extra X and Y length. And I don't necessarily have to. I can eat just as easily throw a four by four sheet on there and, and, and do it. So uh, back to the water table thing. I've been watching some DIY videos on homemade uh, water jets. And it doesn't seem like it's that complicated. Guys have actually made them out of cheap pressure washers, and I probably wouldn't be doing it that way. I'd probably find a high-pressure water pump, um, you know, that makes a higher PSI, and build my own. But uh, I really like the idea of doing that on the table for cutting ABS and uh, and uh, HDPE. You know, uh, I could probably do that with a router. But the, the router setup on a plasma table is kind of problematic uh, just because of the way it works at such a slow rate and the mess it makes. You know, if there's already a water table under it, building a, a water jet makes more sense. Uh, I don't know that I'll actually be able to cut metal with it, but uh, if I'm cutting metal, I can just use the plasma interface. So uh, I don't know that there'll be an issue with that. Uh, I'm still unsure of a lot of stuff just because it, the, building your own CNC plasma can be very complicated. There's so many different choices for different motors, uh, different controllers, different gantries, uh, different everything, different softwares. You know, everybody has a better way of doing it, it seems, and, and it, without any practical experience with them other than messing with friends' tables. Uh, I really don't know enough to make these decisions, but I'm just going to jump in with both feet and figure it out. Uh, there's other guys like uh, Maker Table that say just buy a table. It's not worth building your own, but for the things I want to do, there, there's just not an option that, that I can afford or even anywhere close to it. I, I think I can build this table for about $7,500, and that's still pretty similar with the amount of money I gave right. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to earn some more in the meantime to be able to do the things I want to do. Uh, eventually, I'd like to add a fourth axis, um, a four jaw vise or a three jaw vise with some rollers so I can plasma cut tube. Um, at this point, I plan or my idea is to put the fourth axis over the table. So the piece of tube sits on the table and you can just uh, bring the, the plasma torch over to it and you know just use one axis to go up and down it. Um, and my, my idea on that is to be able to cope or notch or fish mouth or whatever you want to call it to uh, for roll cages. Um, I really like the idea of a miter cut roll cage in most things, you know, minimal bends just because bends are so time consuming. And if you've ever built any cages, I mean, you have to have some bends, usually for the A-pillar. I mean, it depends on, on if you're building it inside of a truck cab or if you're just building uh, a standalone. But uh, having a few bends is, is, is really required for a clean install, but you don't have to have that many. The rest can be miter cuts, especially miter cuts for uh, an intersection of five or six or seven tubes, whatever it may be, those get really complicated. And I, I think there would be a, a huge advantage to being able to CNC plasma cut that. And uh, I still haven't figured out if I'll actually be able to do that fourth axis with the my plasma controller. It might have to be a separate machine or I, I'm not sure. Um, but it seems like the best bet as far as uh, as controllers go. The Masso controller is super expensive and it has some more features but not that many more to make it worthwhile. A lot of them you have to pay to turn on which is I'm not I don't want anything where I have to pay a monthly fee 
or I, I have to constantly, they, they force you to upgrade and pay for the upgrade. I hate that business model, I avoid it at all costs. Once I have something dialed, I don't even like to upgrade the software. I like to leave it exactly how it is, um, just because upgrades create so many issues. You know, if I am going to do an upgrade, I may, I wait for major upgrades. I, you know, I only upgrade every two years or something like that. I just, this, this machine won't have any issues with security. It's not going to be connected to the internet. So I don't care about those things. Um, the other one, the other controller that had my interest a lot is, uh, there's a, a Linux, Linux, uh, the type of Unix, uh, CNC, but I don't know very much about that. And, I haven't been very successful in finding info about it. Like most Unix stuff, it's not nearly as user friendly. And uh, I do have Unix experience, um, so I could probably put it together, but I'm not sure that I want to. Uh, what other stuff? Uh, oh, I still haven't figured out what I want to do for a Z axis. I mean, I know the features I want, but there's so many people that make a Z-axis. Uh, I don't know if I want to use hard limit switches, if I want to use proximity sensors. I do know I want a mag breakaway, uh, just so I don't destroy my torch. But there's so many different types of mag breakaways, you know, and the prices are all over the place. You can start at $400 for a nice Z-axis to sixteen hundred dollars and I, I still haven't figured out what makes that sixteen hundred dollar uh, z-axis so much better than the four hundred dollar one and uh, for, for those of you that don't know what the z-axis is that usually has a ball screw and that's what controls the torch height so it, it uh, there's there's a few different ways of controlling the torch height but the most common one is uh, every time it's going to start a cut or every every so far you know, after so long in a in a series of cuts, it will push down on the on the piece of material to see where it is, and then lift back up a predetermined amount. And that's really important because the torch height, um, where the arc flame is, uh, is what controls the amount of beveling that you have. If you're too high or too low, you'll end up with bevels. You really want it at this the perfect height so you get the straightest cut, and then. There's also uh, a little bit with how you program uh, if you go counterclockwise or clockwise. On, on certain arcs, you want to be on a certain type or a certain side of the arc, and I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, to get a flatter and better cut. There's actually a lot going on with this stuff, and it can be very overwhelming as I've found out, you know. But after hearing a lot of people's issues, with the right CNC table, I'm almost happy I didn't get one. Uh, the direct drive has some some issues, uh, and then uh, that the new new gen table wasn't wasn't very well thought out. It seems it uh, it's not rigid enough, and it has some problems, um, which a few guys have have corrected, and some guys have no problems at all, but. Their whole build quality was just horrible. There were tons of people getting machines where they weren't wired correctly, and you know they'd go hook all the machine up, and they'd end up having to take the control box apart to move wires around or uh, plug things in that weren't unplugged. I mean, just stuff that should never get through quality control of any company. So I'm almost happy that I didn't get that table, but I wish I knew what I knew now back in February when I ordered it because I could have already had a table up and running and you know now it's uh, it's six months down the road and I still don't have an offer I don't even have parts to build an operating table you know it's this whole process is probably going to end up taking a year from the day I spent money to the day I have an operating table which is insane well anyways I appreciate you listening to me rant and rave about CNC tables. And if you have any questions, uh, leave them below. Thank you.